Hey guys, welcome back to your second part of this XML tutorial. We're really going to start digging into the actual XML stuff now. So, before that, we need to actually start set up a little property here in the app delegate. So, app delegate strong atomic ns mutable array, and we're going to list array. We're going to use this as kind of a counter later on, as well as other things. Synthesize um, the list array. Okay, now into your parser, okay? So this is gonna do all the work for us. The way XML works, the parser works anyway. It'll read the XML file. Okay, it's XML, what you got? Okay, top element is prices, okay? That's the ancestor. But prices doesn't actually have any information itself as such. It has three children who have their own child elements, okay? So you want it to go to price, go cool, what you got? XML goes, okay, we found another object inside. Inside the object we find more objects. We have to actually count for each tier we want to use. So let's begin. If element name is equal to string prices, okay, so you want it to say, okay, what you got? Prices starts off. So what are prices to do, okay? We want prices to actually start and, and initialize the array we're going to fill later on. So app dot list array equals uh, and this mutable array a lock in it. So you remember the array we made two seconds ago? Uh, we're not going to fill it in the delegate. We want to have it in the delegate. We want to set it up and fill it here. Okay, But we're not always going to be just hitting the one element. Okay, We only want it to hit the prices array and create it once. Okay, So else if... I always do that. Else if element name is equal to string price which actually has child objects inside we want to process do something else okay so what we want to do in here we want to set up um, we have our list the list object which is a reference to our list okay this is where we're going to be putting in all our information from the XML so we're going to parse from the XML into um, into the application and then put it in some useful format which can be tell you for now we to initialize the list object somewhere so let's do it here so the list because we have to access this we have to have, an, we have, to have an access, uh, if we want to use it we have to have an accessor type the list equals list a lock in it perfect okay what else we want to actually extract attributes now from this and what's the best way to do this by using our, our ID so uh, the list dot uh, we call drink ID yeah equals attribute attribute dictionary which is dictionary type given to us by the constructor uh, object for key ID integer value integer value because it's a ns integer as we saved earlier perfect so that is now pretty much completed our uh, all we have to do is pull out um, a reference to each of the each of the uh, children which can be the ID so if we have a thousand in there we're going to pull out each one according to the ID so that's what's important to have individual IDs okay so now found characters okay found characters is going to be the next protocol for this so if current uh, value doesn't exist okay so we've just if we just started and this doesn't exist yet we want to actually set it up so if it doesn't exist let's make it exist current value current L value equal to ns mutable a mutable string a lock uh, in it with string string so we're going to initialize it with what we've been passed on from the parser okay but if it does exist, if it does exist, what are we going to do? Current element value append string string. So if it already exists, we're going to basically add what's been passed on already. So we're going to, so just to go over this so you don't get confused, we're starting off. If we're just beginning, we're going to create the array. We're going to pass on the string we parsed. And if there isn't a current value, we're going to make it with this string. If it does exist, we're going to append it to it. So we're going to keep appending all information to this um, 
this data block and then we're going to put these elements into our um, into our list array in the delegate. Okay, sorry for confusion now, it's kind of hard to explain. It'll make more sense once we actually do this part here, okay? So, this is where we're going to kind of end it. So, if element name, element name is equal to string prices, prices. Okay, so, don't forget, as I said, we don't want to actually look for any information itself within the entire prices. If it's already been made, we don't want to actually do anything with it. So it's return itself. So it's not going to happen, okay? But because we're, we're trying to actually get everything out of the child elements, we want to do something else. So we'll leave it there because if this hits it, if the element is still on, um, because we're not ending it, don't forget. If it comes, to, if it is the first element, which is prices, it'll go. Oops, done. No problem, and then goes to the next element and down and down and down through the list. But what if it's something else? But sorry, if element name is equal to string is equal to string price. So the actual things you want to get at, what we're going to do with this app dot list array add object the list. Okay, makes sense to you. So if we have pulled out these, this item and appended to our string, we want to add it to the list. Okay, so we're going to add it to our data object. So once that's been added, we want to set that the list equal to nil. Three we added. You know we don't want to add the same object, object again. So done, perfect. But we need else just in case that doesn't quite work as you want. So else the list set value no not set beer set value of the ID is current element value for a key element name. Okay. And I think that is our entire class. Did it do with us? Oh yes, don't forget same as same as above. Current element value equals nil. Excellent. So our parse is done. So let's see if we can do something with this. Let's go back into our delegate and have a look, see what needs to be done here. So it's gonna parse it, do do do. Okay, let's see if that's actually gonna work for us now. So we have actually filled this list array when the application starts to the parser. And we're initializing the parser in our delegate. So if it works, say this do yay. We want to do <clears throat> something better, let's go um, amount uh, percent i comma uh, list array count okay dog I think that's do, do, do. oh no <laughs> okay if you're watching from the start and you saw this error very well done because I didn't I made the building but what's the building doing nothing the building isn't actually going to do a single thing because I have attached the actual <laughs> trigger to it equals XML parser parse so if succeeds what's succeeding nothing's gonna happen so now we build and run now steady of me okay ignore the fact that something's there that's because it's default amount three so we have three items in our um, array and we're pulling them out perfect so we now have a working array to pull from brilliant so now let's very quickly uh, gonna go and gut this controller in it with name see memory warning all can be shot straight to hell um, and to do what else can we do here text label goodbye the entire contents of this like road index path goodbye Okay, so let's start modify our master detail view controller, master view controller. Okay, look, we need a single access here again. So import app delegate perfecto, and let's make this a property. Property not atomic retain app delegate app 
Alright. I think that's all we need from that. Take your controls. Find synthesize app. Okay, so now we're gonna start accessing all these nice methods. Okay. So let's just so I make some room on your screen so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Sure over there was to make our accessor for our list class import list. Let's do the same here. Property not atomic chain. If you watched my previous tutorials, this will be nothing new to you. We're going to be now filling our um. He's running the bloody door about this hour. We're filling our um table view with the array. So we need to have our accessors for all the objects from the classes. And then synthesize the list. Yes, perfect. Okay. So hmm, I probably should not leave that in it, but oh well, I can do it here. App equals UI share application UI application shared application delegate. Yeah, no warning's fine. You don't always need to cast it. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I I try to avoid doing it. So what else happens in the video load? Self dot table view reload data. I always forget that one. So I'm just gonna set now. Okay, so we have our accessors, let's go to work. Okay. You should all know these methods by now. Numbers of sections in table view, one perfect. Now this fella, I'm the rows of sections. Return app dot list array count. Which is going to be three for the moment. Now, this is where I set up the disclosure first. So we're going to have some nice little things to play with. But first, we're going to set up our little thing jiggies. So, the list equals uh, this is a list. Yep, app dot list array object at index index path dot dot row. Awesome. Cell dot text label dot text equals the list dot name. Pull the name of the no, yeah the name perfect, and then cell dot accessory type equals UI table to do, do type disclosure indicator. Happy days. So let's do. I'm just gonna pull our information from the list which we've made and display it in a table cell. Hopefully I haven't leaked too much from this table view control, it's gonna crash. See? Woohoo. We've pulled in our um names. Now we want to do something with this. I'm just gonna pause the video and check the time because I had to pause this video a few minutes ago when my phone rang. Um so we're pulling the names. So now you want to actually Put these details to work for us. So I'm going to pause and check the time. If the time's run too short, I'll make a new video, and in that video, we will finish it all up. Okay, folks, talk to you in two seconds.